Hey creator, so you're going on your brother's podcast to defend your position on LeBron James and the Lakers or maybe Fortnite and Mex. But you got one problem and that problem is you don't know how to argue and you don't want to lose again. Your brother always wins the argument and he's mom and dad's favorite. So how do you win the argument of the day on your brother's podcast? You learn how to argue like a lawyer and I can teach you how. I'm Ian Corzine, your social media lawyer and in today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips for how to argue like a lawyer, how to win like a lawyer. All right, let's hit this. Step number one is to prepare for the argument. When I'm going to court, the first thing that I do is read everything I can on the subject of the argument. I go online, I do Google searches, I listen to audio podcasts, I watch videos, I do whatever it takes to get adequately prepared so that I can win this argument. And make sure that your research into the background of the issue you're gonna talk about in your argument is not one-sided. You wanna make sure that when you're doing your preparation, you're reading articles, you're watching videos, you're listening to podcasts that support both sides of the argument. You wanna make sure that you are prepared to be able to address those arguments that maybe are not your own. They're not your own beliefs in this argument. And firsthand experience when you're preparing an argument is really, really important. If you are arguing what you know, you're gonna be way more compelling than if you've never done something before and then are taking a position on it. So if you think that mechs in Fortnite is a bad thing, well, you should go on Fortnite, play Fortnite, use a mech, or at least observe them being used so that you can have an adequate firsthand position on your argument. And make sure you take notes when you're doing your preparation for your argument. It's great to look back at those notes before the argument. It's also good for your memory. There's a thing called reticular activating system. What that means is, is that when you write things down about the arguments you're gonna make, you're more apt to remember them and you're more apt to remember them quickly. So it's really good to get in the habit when you're preparing for argument that you write down notes so that you'll remember those notes, you'll remember those points later on in time. And what I always do when I prepare for an argument that I have to make in court is I frame the argument, I outline it, I write it out so that one, I'll remember it more, but two, so I can be more logical when I present that argument. If you wanna learn how to outline your arguments, I made a checklist for you. You can get that free checklist in the link in the description section below. Step number two, is to question everything about your positions in the argument. It's really important that you create a framework for your argument, whatever it's gonna be, but then you beat the hell out of it. You question every single shred of logic that supports your argument. You speak to family, to friends, to enemies. You get their opinions on your argument so that you really know it inside and out, its strengths, its weaknesses, and you're adequately prepared when you go into battle and try to win that argument. I've even gone so far as to post the argument, the points of the argument on social media so that not only do I know the people that support me in my argument, but also I know the opposing position really well. A lot of times in social media, the opposing point of view comes out real quick. Step number three is to practice being emotionally triggered. I know this sounds a little esoteric, but the bottom line is that this is the most important part of preparing for an argument. If you wanna learn how to argue like a lawyer, you've got to master this portion, and that is trying to remain calm in the storm of argument. Now that you really understand your argument, you've beat it up, you've extracted the logic from it, it's really important that you practice being emotionally triggered during the argument. A lot of times you're wed to the concept of being right, and when someone says you're not right, that hurts. That makes your heart rate go faster, that makes you sweat, and worst of all, it makes you incapable of listening. And listening is one of the most valuable parts of making a successful argument. Listening to the other side. Listening to the other side bring up weaknesses to their argument that you can counter, that you can pounce on. So how do you practice getting emotionally triggered? Well, what I do when I wanna practice making an argument before a court or a jury is I slow down. Sometimes if I slow down the words I speak, if I slow down my thinking to a certain extent, 
I will not be as emotionally triggered when someone says I'm wrong. I also think about what are the consequences of losing the argument. If you're on your brother's podcast, think about what happens if you just lost the argument. You just couldn't make the argument right and you lost, you looked like a fool. So I think of all the negative consequences of that. Boy, I'm gonna be teased, I'm gonna be criticized, I'm gonna be made fun of. If you can get really comfortable with that, then you can walk into an argument feeling confident. Hey, I've done my preparation, I'm ready to go, I've done everything I could possibly do, and listen, if I lose, that's okay, I'm gonna be okay. But one thing I will emphasize is that when you are making your actual argument, and when you're actually preparing for your argument, slow down. Slow down helps you listen to other people, helps you pick out little points that you hadn't thought of before. So I always try to slow down when I'm preparing and when I'm practicing getting emotionally triggered from a particular argument. Step number four happens when you're making your argument, let's say in your brother's podcast, or let's say it's on the street, or let's say it's before a jury, and that is to establish common ground. I always start my arguments, almost always, with the things that the opposing party and me can agree on. What is undisputed about this particular issue? What can we push to the side because we agree on those points? The effect of this is it adds to my credibility as an arguer. It fosters some camaraderie because you know, we're just two people arguing. It's not a big deal. And it's more efficient, frankly. Why spend time arguing over points that we agree on? A lot of times you may have heard of the phrase, pick your battles. Well, establishing common ground is picking your battles right. Focus on the points, the main points that you can win on the argument and put the ones that are red herrings that are less important over to the side. They don't matter. When I go into an argument before a jury or a judge, a lot of times I think about the fact that, listen, people can only take in a certain amount of information about a debate, even if they're emotionally invested. So I think of two to three points that I definitely can win on, or at least I have a strong chance of winning on, and I bring those points up first. I quickly dismiss the smaller points of my opposing party's arguments, I push those to the side, and I hammer my two to three arguments that I know can get my point across. You can do this too. You know, one of the things that people come to me, my clients come to me and they say, how do I argue like you? How do I have your voice? Really, it's all about preparation and trying to simplify your arguments, trying to make them consumable by your audience. Before I make my arguments, I lay them out in a syllogism, which is basically a way of being able to think of the arguments in kind of a mathematical way. If A plus B is true, then C must also be true. In the law, we call simplified argument syllogisms. All dogs are animals, all animals have four legs, therefore all dogs have four legs. Simple, understandable, easily digestible arguments for the opposing party and the audience. Our brains are pre-wired to accept syllogisms, so use them. Another great argument technique is the analogy, comparison of two things to illustrate a larger point. So if you're arguing LeBron leaving the Lakers, is like water leaving the body, they'd both be dead. That would be a good analogy to be able to use in your argument. Analogies are extremely important to use in your argument to convince your audience or sometimes the opposing party of the larger point of your argument. And if you wanna learn how to argue like a lawyer, you should definitely use analogies in your argument. What I like about them is that you can think about them before the argument. Oftentimes it's best to be off the cuff in an argument, but with analogies, you can actually think about them, brainstorm them when you're doing your syllogisms, and plan them so that you can illustrate these points as best as possible. Analogies are also great in negotiations. Let's say you have a business negotiation coming up, you should use analogies to be able to convince the other side of the value of your position. If you wanna learn more about how to maximize negotiations in a business setting, watch my video right there. If you're new to the channel, come join us. I'd love to see you here. Hit the like button, consider subscribing, and join us on Discord. There is a link to the Discord server in the description section below. Also, you can set up a consult with me at iancorzine.com. Okay, that's enough for today. We'll see you next time.